So if we uh, could close our eyes or turn our gaze inward and uh, welcome your experience, whichever way it's appearing to you. In the silence, the stillness, the inner a stillness of consciousness of our true nature. Whichever way the body is appearing, whichever sensations or vibrations or movements within the body, To welcome, meaning to be, not knowing to be as presence, as this uh, transparent, effortless presence. Just allow things to be as they are, without any interest in any particular experience or any particular state. Inviting the mind to rest in its source. Without any images. Images about oneself or others or the world or the past. And if an image arises, to let it be, to simply remain as presence. Without adding any uh, personal interest. Before any thoughts or a sensation appears, you are. You as presence, as awareness, as beingness, as the worldless. Reality. The I am, which has no form or shape, and yet is undeniable, the reality of I, that which is completely free from any definition or any formulation, the reality that perceives that is
whatever the the mind uh, formulates, meaning whatever appears to you, it's just limited forms and shapes and sounds and sensations. None of which knows anything about the reality that perceives them, that knows them. whatever limitations or boundaries that you imagine to yourself, whatever ways you limit yourself is imaginary. It's your own wish and will. to formulate yourself in some way or the other, which is not necessary. It has no purpose except of keeping the mind occupied. A sense of false urgency. Believing that the mind knows you. Makes the limited mind your master. Thoughts and sensations do not define you. They do not formulate you. There are echoes, echoes of empty sounds. You don't need to define yourself via the past images. Memories. You do not need to de define yourself in, in whatsoever way. You are already defined by God as God's being. Not a, a personal being, not separate from all of God's creation, not separate from the cosmos, the wind, the oceans. Within yourself is God's knowingness that I am. We don't need to add any shape or form to the I. You do not need to limit it by attaching to the formless I, 
a particular body-mind. The freedom of, of being is your innate right. It's not something you have to work hard for or strive to win. The joy of being, the peace, the freedom, the happiness, the is your innate right, the innate right of the innate reality of consciousness. There is no possibility for any separate mind to gain or attain liberation. Liberation is your birthright, not the birthright of the body, but as a way of speaking, your, your innate reality. can allow the body-mind to appear to you, whichever way it is willed to appear. There's nothing at stake for you. You, this transparent, aware presence, this oneness, the, the I, that is beyond name and form. Like the, the parable of the prodigal son that Overlook, overlooks that they are the, the son and daughter of the king and queen. Imagine themselves to be somebody from the village. We all are in, the, in God's village. It is I that says I. It is I that perceives perceives the body, perceives the mind, perceives thoughts. Perceives the world, the universe, this I. The only reality, the only game in town is I. You imagine consciousness to be something else, that you are something else and some, something other than the belief that you are the mind is a falsehood. The mind appears to you. Whichever way it appears, doesn't matter much. As long as you're not hypnotized, mesmerized by that which appears.
so do you have any questions anything that you would like to explore please make sure you unmute your mic so any questions Maggie, John. Hello, John. Hi. Um, John, I don't know. I'm not hearing you. Say it again. I'm not hearing you. I mean, is it? I was asking what is meant mm -hmm. by nothing comes into existence. Um, I, I've heard that in the non dual. Yes. And I'm wondering if it's just pretty much that there's only, there's only awareness, there's only reality. So, um, that is kind of what it's about. So anyway, I'm asking you yes. to maybe expand on that. Yes. So, so existence is an arising. It's something arising out of something else. A certain, a certain, let's say, form arising, uh, but a form cannot arise out of another form. A form is is an arising. And, uh, so the source of any arising is the formless. Now you may perceive that object A arises seemingly out of object B, or object B seemingly arises out of object A. But if you trace the arising of object B to object A and object A to that which is formless, you will come to comprehend that all arisings arise out of the formless, out of that which is not an arising. A good uh, metaphor for that is the night dream. So in your night dream, you dream that you are a a 10-year-old uh, boy, let's say, and that you are perceiving, uh, you're in the playground and you, or you're in, you're in a school and you're perceiving your schoolmates. One could say that your schoolmates 
our perception B, our an arising B, existence B, and they're arising to you, you being this 12 year old boy. So your schoolmates are event B and you, the 12 year old boy is event A. But if you trace further back your own arising, you will find that you are an arising within the dreamer's mind. The dreamer is not an arising. The dreamer is that which, out of which all arisings arise. So existence is similar to the night dream in that existence is a mind impression. First, there is the personal mind, John's mind. And John's mind is, within John's mind, there are certain arisings, certain appearances. So the, when you trace that which arises within John's mind, you will trace it back to consciousness. Because John's mind and its content is uh, known and perceived by consciousness. In other words, the reality of John's mind and whatever John's mind's, John's mind's activities are is consciousness, which is not an arising. So from the point of view of consciousness, all exist, existence, that which exists, is a sort of a, a movement, let's say, within consciousness itself. Because consciousness doesn't actually leave itself and creates a separate reality that is known as John's mind. The fact is that John's mind is nothing else but consciousness itself appearing as John's mind. And it's appearing as John's mind to itself, to I. Although John's mind has particular perceptions, the, act, the perceiver of those perceptions is consciousness. So when we say that it, there is existence does not arise, there is no, no objective reality or separate reality to existence, we are basically referring that all existence, all our experience, everything that we perceive, everything that we sense, that we, we, we imagine, all of that is nothing else but consciousness itself appearing as that. In other words, the reality of existence is consciousness. Of uh, the, the reality of existence, excuse me, of is consciousness. The reality of existence is consciousness. So, existence is not to be denied as being the world body mind, but the main misunderstanding we have about existence is that existence has a reality of its own. It doesn't. So Magdi, the, um, so one could say that um, reality also doesn't come into existence, true? Well, I mean, it doesn't, it cannot come into existence, I mean, that it's coming out of some, it's there's two or something. I mean, by reality, we're referring to consciousness, meaning that there is something rather than nothing in this something 
Oui. Is what you refer to as reality. And when we look into this something, we find that this reality is actually I slash consciousness. Now, yes, reality being absolute, meaning being borderless, there isn't reality A and reality B. Reality being one, nothing can exist outside of reality. And yet within this reality, there is this conversation. There is a world body mind activity among a billion other things because consciousness or reality has no boundaries, no limitations. It's nothing that there are no conditions upon reality. There, is, there are no rules and regulations that are set by the commission, the, the reality commission. Reality is absolute. So it's an infinite potential way beyond what the human mind can conceive. The human mind can only conceive certain limited, limited uh, functions. So if you want to talk about existence and reality, we could say that existence arises within reality, out of reality, and is known by reality. Reality does not arise within existence. Reality does not arise. So when we're speaking of existence, we're speaking about a certain activity within the within that which is beyond activity and non-activity, meaning consciousness or reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I understand what you're saying, and um, and that was that was that was. Um, consciousness or awareness, reality coming into existence or it doesn't come into existence is because you know it seems like it, it doesn't if, come into it into in, separate in one existence. in my right and yet right and yet yeah because in my experience I, I'm sorry I lost you John I oh I'm sorry I, I was just because I was just giving you my uh, experience and maybe you could come on that because I, to me that when I'm aware um, or when I have, when, when I'm seeing things come into existence and get leaving things come and go. And um, so if one, if I look at myself that way, if I explore that, then the I always remains, yet there is no, in the, in the, in the ex so-called um, things that we say, we can't deny that they're there. We touch the flower, they're there. We touch the table, it's there. And that's, or at least we say we experience something. And, and however, the I, never came, never leaves. It's, I guess maybe what um, I think uh, somebody's talked about eternity, eternity now and all that kind of stuff. But it's that that's really what I was guess, kind of getting as there's no, there's no experience like there is with the things that come and go. There's only the experience of ever present. Well, and so one can't turn around and say the truth is that it's, it, it, it came into existence somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So we do experience the smell of a rose or the color of the flowers or the sound of the wind. So there is yeah. phenomena. There is the, the phenomenal realm 
like right now we are talking, there is a hearing, there's perceiving, sensing. Now, yes. uh, which, we, which we can refer to as existence, which we do refer to as existence. But the, when you contemplate the reality of this perception or this of hearing or sensing, the reality of, of life, the reality of, of existence, you will find that uh, the reality that existence has, does not have an independent reality of its own. Its reality is right. intimate with the reality of being, the reality of consciousness. So the reality of our experience and the reality of presence or consciousness is they're not two. And we know from direct experience that consciousness is real, that presence, awareness is real. Now, the, we do not deny the rose, we do not deny the mountains or the rivers or the universe, the cosmos, the galaxies. Uh, they are also our experience. And they have a reality. They're not nothing. When you are smelling a rose, it's not, it's not nothing. There is a reality to that. So the world, body, mind have a reality. And their reality is consciousness. Yes. So given that the reality of your experience is consciousness, and that your reality, the reality of I is consciousness, and that uh, therefore the, the experience of smelling, tasting, touching, perceiving is within, let's say, is within that reality. Like a current, the current is within the ocean. It's made out of, the, of water. So one could conceive, comprehend that our experience, our phenomenal experience is within that reality. It is made out of that reality. And that reality is formless. It is non-material. It is, it's, it does not, it is beyond birth and death. And it is the reality of I. So that although I experience existence, I do not exist. I am. So there's a difference between amness, beingness, and existence. So the, the amness is not an experience of existence. The amness is the reality of experience, is the reality of existence. But you cannot refer to amness as an experience as you would refer to uh, perception or sensation as an experience. So existence is within being, within amnes. And amnes is not in the realm of existence and non-existence absolute. So the relative is within the absolute, but the absolute is not within the relative. Although the relative is made out of the absolute. Although the reality of the relative is the absolute. And when you translate it to your experience, your, 
your experience in the non-dual understanding is the experience of consciousness. So you're experiencing the world body mind as consciousness. You don't perceive or experience any external realities. It's always that same reality that is the reality of the world body mind. And there is no, uh, nothing lacking and uh, nothing that's beginning and ending when it comes to I consciousness. Of course, there is a beginning and ending to the day, there is a beginning and ending to uh, any event, a phenomenal event, but there's no beginning and ending. There's no birth and death when it comes to reality, the reality of consciousness. Any questions? Hi, Maggie. Hey, George. Hi. I don't have a question. All I want to do is say thank you. Thank you. Maggie? Hey, John. Yeah, I think we got cut off. So I'm, I oh. think I'm in a bad location or something. Oh. I, my lap, my lap, my, um, you know, on this was, um, when you say, um, uh, that, um, awareness, conscious, I does not come into existence or whatever, well, whatever, yeah. um, you know, and that, and that's the only re reason why anybody can say that has to be that somebody has experienced something, which is I experiencing itself. Um, but I guess one could say something later about it because it can't just be a concept yeah. um, because concepts of course the, all right uh, when we when we speak um, of course you know we, we may we may use concepts but uh, we're speaking about uh, from our experience so in your experience, awareness is real, consciousness is real. And uh, perception, a thought arises to you and it arises from where? It arises just right there within you, within you, meaning within awareness, within you as awareness. Awareness perceives the thought. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to cook for dinner tonight? Right. And then, you know, so it's an arising that arises within awareness and is perceived by I, I awareness. And it dissolves. Where does it dissolve? Right, 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 right. I, I maybe I'm not being clear, because when you said, 
I think you said, I think you said this, you can't experience yes. um, awareness or- Experience, right. Well, I, awareness is not- Okay, so maybe, maybe you can clarify that. I, I think I understand it, but right. there's also the knowing that you, if somebody says, I knows itself and what everything you just said, the, the reason you can say that is somehow I is saying it, but it's uh, yes. it's yes. known somehow. Right. So there's a there is a a being knowingness. Okay. Sort of, oh. sort of an understanding. There is an understanding yes. where the understanding is. It's not a mind understanding. Yes, of course. Right. It is formulated using using language yes. mind, but the understanding. It's just consciousness being itself or knowing itself. Yes. Or, so it's, it's, yes. it's a being knowing right? rather than experiencing consciousness. Okay. Yes, exactly. Or we could say, if you want to, use, if you want to is, insist on using the term experience, we could say that the experience of consciousness yeah. is causeless Causeless peace, joy, freedom, beauty, love, happiness, wisdom, intelligence. But yeah. but it, you don't experience love or beauty. It love, beauty can right. shine into the world body mind. Beautiful sunrises, beautiful sunsets, beautiful painting, beautiful opera, and can beautiful conversation and nice meal. It can sort of re reflect, like like you, like you see you see the reflection of this, the um, scintillation of the sun of the rays of the sun on the surface of the pond. You see, you can perceive, you can experience peace, joy, and happiness in the world body mind. But although you can experience phenomenally the love, beauty, and happiness. The love, beauty, and happiness are not an experience. So, like, a mother has love for her children. And, but she's shopping at the market, buying tomatoes. And then she comes home and she sees her child and she suddenly she's experiencing the love for her child. Oh, my beautiful son or daughter. See? Yes. The love for her child was there all along. Yeah. But when she sees her child, now it is expressing itself. It's manifesting itself as an experience. But the love that was yeah. there is not an experience. Sort of, I'm just using sort of, yeah. a, sort of a metaphor. So the the experience of of consciousness is similar in that way that we experience consciousness yeah. like we are speaking right now. We experience consciousness, the sweetness of conversation, the sweetness of each other, each other's company you know, the resting, the body resting. So yes, so we do experience the imprint, let's say, of consciousness okay. as the world body mind. Mm -hmm. But consciousness itself is not an experience. It is that which we are. It is the reality. Yes, exactly. Reality of, That's why. It's the reality, just the one reality. Yeah. And because we use language and we speak we say reality or we say consciousness, it may seem because of the language that we are speaking about something, but right. we are not speaking about something. Consciousness is that which is speaks, but not the body, it's the reality. Well, yeah. We go back to the word language. So it's a little slippery here in that. Yeah, yeah I hear you. In that, yes, I, I, that the 
the, 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 so being knowingness, being the understanding, understanding is not a mind activity. Right. Knowing, being knowing is not a mind activity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a, re that's just, um, um, I guess one could say, I don't know, I, I, I would start doing words too. I mean, it's hard to do everything in words, but it, it's just uh, knowing it and speaking about it is just also, like you said, an activity of consciousness. It's just, um, but you can't, I mean, it's like, I, uh, well, that's it. It's just, I mean, I think because the reason why I asked this question, because um, I, again, today was contemplating and inquiring and, and, and that, that came up for me. Um, uh, I thought, wow, I, 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 un, I have some mind type of stuff, stuff about understanding mm -hmm. this um, thing of existence, you know, these things are existent because it was talking with you and about the reality and you touch and you say you can't deny that. And, but there is nothing but existence. Um, and yet there is the activity of existence. And so, um, and yet we can speak about um, I am and say it, um, but it's, it's not, it's not, it's not a me mm -hmm. that um, yes. Uh, yes. knows something separate and say I am and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So. Of existence in terms of the mind and yeah. consciousness as a reality. So, and they're not two. So the reality right. of existence is consciousness. The reality of yeah. mind, the reality of perception is, is consciousness. So think yeah. of it that way, that there is, the, there is that which exists, which we call whatever the world body mind, the arising, and the reality of, of existence is our direct experience of consciousness, our, our reality, the reality, my reality, the reality of I and the reality of yeah. the reality is consciousness. So every, every aspect of our experience has a reality, otherwise what would it be? It has right. reality. Right, exactly. And the reality of we already have established that the reality in our experience, consciousness is real. So we'll look at it this way, in terms of reality, existence, and its reality. Okay, I, I, I think um, I just, um, I think it just sort of confirms at least the idea of what I was um, thinking and, and seeing. And actually it was in the last week, I guess I've been, it's more, I almost like to say palpable, palpable, but it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's just these things that are used, we, that you use and others and we use sometimes at these concepts, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, there's the activity of consciousness, everything is one and all. But I think in the last week, the more and more I have in my contemplations, the more and more I have, there's a, a knowing of that without, it's, it's less conceptual. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, and so there's somehow in the conceptual realm too, there's an understanding a comprehension in some way that says, oh, yeah, because uh, how could there be? I, I mean, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's, there's just that being of it. You know, I know that um, everything is made out of myself, I. I know that everything is the activity. You know, the, the zero distance stuff, um, hit home even better this week because of talking with you. And, and so everything is now, somehow things are ch um, <laughs> churning or moving 
um, and and there's a deeper kind of going. Um, I don't know if I can say into consciousness because it doesn't make any sense to say that, but but I think you know what I mean. It's yeah. just a deeper understanding, yeah. I guess one can say. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very real. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and so that's why I asked the question was to make sure that I'm uh, uh, not necessarily to make sure, but just to understand even more. So I just have a, a desire and interest to to um, to know that kind of the uh, what that the idea of what I was saying in the very beginning. And that is nothing comes into an existence. But and of course, existence usually means it's um, there's some usually it's a form. So but a consciousness is absolute. So that's known. And now it's becoming clearer and clearer and clearer um, to me. And um, there's no separation stuff. Um, so anyway, I, I appreciate you uh, talking about it. Thank you. Mandy. Any questions? Hi, Magdi. Hello, Holly. Hi. Hey. Um, so over the past couple of days, I've been looking at um, a question and I guess to start out I would say that the um, that I can always experience and find and see the the peaceful spaciousness that's always present mm -hmm. um, and the the question I was asking myself is um, which I I know the answer from you saying, but I don't know if I have the answer from experiences. Is that peaceful spaciousness that which is aware? And I think the answer is yes. But I was, I mean, I know the answer must be yes. But I was wondering if you can um, talk some about that because I'm realizing that I am not sure that I really have that connection down. Yes, so awareness, consciousness. When it's not veiled, by, you know, the, the mini belief, you know, the sense of lack, fear of mortality. It is peace. It is the borderless spacious, spaciousness, the transparent, And yes, it is the reality that perceives. It is that which perceives this moment. So yes, one could say that it is that very spaciousness, that very peace, the, the love. The wisdom. The, that, yes, that speaks, that perceives. So, so peace is not an experience that consciousness is having, although one could say that coming to the term existence, 
that peace exists within the body mind when when we're not agitated. But that's just a, an imprint. It's just a, an echo of the peace of being, of the peace of consciousness within the body mind. So the, the peace of, of our true nature is causeless. It's, it's God's peace. It's the eternal peace, the absolute the peace of being, God's peace. And the, the formless and yet ever present and all present and all the all beingness of that, of that, of consciousness. Is that which we experience as I am, and that which we experience in our existence as when we open the door and walk into a room, there is this sense of here I am. It's not so much that here I am the body, here I am Holly, it's just here I am. So within the body mind, the particular body mind, there is that same beingness, that same presence, that same vastness, borderlessness, and, uh, formless, formless presence. But that is within uh, our body mind experience an imprint uh, of that same uh, presence and uh, all present, borderless presence of consciousness. So in terms of your question, is it that peace, that, that peace or that, uh, that sense of uh, uh, vastness that perceives, yes, yes it is. So the, that which perceives is, is never holy, it's, it's not the mind that perceives, it's not if the feeling of being holy that perceives a feeling is is an arising is something that is perceived but often we're not interested in most of our feelings we're only interested in the loud one, the louder the louder ones you know a lot of sensations you know in the body mind we, they're there but we don't you know we don't care much for them and every now and then we make a big deal about but something, <laughs> then it becomes, you know, then this, the sensation becomes, becomes a feeling and it can even become an emotion, <laughs> you know. So, uh, always that which perceives is, is the I, is, is consciousness. That which hears these words right now is, is that same, presence, that same transparency, that same, you say, you could say peace, the stillness of being. Yes. Yes. And when we approach our experience, meaning that which we perceive, um, correctly, meaning we respond in an appropriate way to whatever appears to us. When we are responding in an appropriate way to whatever is appearing to us, uh, then that sense of peace and, and uh, that sense of presence is not disturbed. But when we respond inappropriately 
to the situations that arise to us, then we will experience a, uh, a limitation upon um, our peace and, and, and the, the vastness, the borderless presence, the vastness of being. And the inappropriate uh, approach to our experience comes from the personal aspect when somehow we a moment in a flash, we believe that I am this body mind, I am this person, that I, that there is a reality, a rea there is a, a reality to this, the person. Now my reality is no longer consciousness. Rather, it is the personal mind, the personal aspect, the, the belief that there is a personal reality somehow that is what is real. Whenever that gets on board, then as, as, as uh, uh, friends who are looking into, into truth, into our non-dual nature, we need to take a look. We need to take a look at uh, whether that position, that assumption, that place from which the position from which we are perceiving is a valid and uh, the mind would always the mind in ignorance would say yes it is valid you know they insulted me and they we should throw it the pie in their face you know we are, we've got to, they can we can they cannot get away with it you know that's the, how the mind will 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 respond so we we go a step further in this what we do quite often in our meetings that on what, what, what is the reality of, of this I, me, holy, you know, I, me, Magdi, what is that reality? Because if it is real, then it makes complete sense to stand by what truth, stand by reality. And then we come to the contemplation that holy is, out of history, there is a history, all the images, feelings, which thoughts, belief structures about me and so on. That these, these are thoughts and, and sensations and feelings that appear to us. They appear to they appear to, to whom? They appear to I. So Holy is a, a conglomeration of, of existence, of activities that appear to I. So what, what uh, am I, the I, that has no name, no words to describe it? We say reality, we say consciousness. Or am I, you know, the, the daughter, the, the, the wife, the sister, the... Uh, Am I that which I perceive or the reality I perceive? That's a very powerful question whenever you ask yourself that question because it restores the compass, you know, it restores the north, it, it restores the correct. It makes you pause because it's important to pause because if you understand something and you don't pause to allow this understanding to be the, the place from which you, you will act and you will respond. Although you have the understanding, the old model of protecting, defending, justifying, feeling, you know, the, 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 the power of the feelings and the emotions can pull you back into, well, you know, into the emotion, into the feeling, into the, the inappropriate model, inappropriate response. 
So, but whenever you are acting from the spontaneity of presence, the situation, you perceive the situation, you contemplate it, certain thoughts arise to you. <clears throat> and there is intelligence, there is a love, and you, you, make, a, you make a choice or not. Uh, it is that very peace and that very, that, that, that freedom that is making this choice. Via body mind, the activity, I'm gonna drive over and buy a gift and apologize, whatever, you know, the, the body mind is the instrument of, of an instrument of, of love and intelligence and beauty. I mean, in its proper uh, usage. Yeah, thank you. I um, I feel like you often answer both the question that I ask and the question that I didn't ask <laughs> at the same time. So, thank you. <laughs> okay, Lovely to see yeah. you. You too. Thank you. You see, somebody wrote something. Let me double check. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Oh, happy, yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Any questions? Well, there are no more questions. Very uh, lovely to be with you. Hello, Rashmi, thank you all. Trish and Holly and Emma. Nice to see you, Emma, Esther, George, and Lena, Zoe, Marga, Adrienne, hey, Jeff, Gloriana. Jenny and John. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nancy. Happy Valentine's, everyone. Yeah, happy Valentine's. <laughs>